Hi guys, happy Thursday, happy Matthew Math Matherton. <laughs> uh, I've started out the lesson with putting a horrible graphic up on your screen. I'm so sorry, it's blurry, so you're probably thinking, oh, my YouTube channel, it's, you know, low quality. Nope, it's the picture, um, but it's one of my uh, preferred ones because I, I like the images that they chose. So I'm just going to read you the blur in case you can't read it. So these are triangles, but the ones on top in red are triangles that are based on the sides. So we could talk about those three. The ones that are down here are triangles based on the angles that they make. That's the opening. If it's a Pac-Man mouth, how big it is, how small it is. So anyways, back up here. If it is an equilateral triangle, then all three sides are the same length. And they emphasize that by putting this little slash, slash, slash. So like they're saying this, 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 they all get one slash, they're all the same, okay? So that's equilateral, and a nice hint for that is it has the word equal. It looks like equal in there, so all sides are equal. That's how you remember. For isosceles, you'll see the little slashes here. Two of the sides are the same length, so this mark and this mark are the same, but you see how this one's not. So this one's different. So this one and this one over here, if you were to measure them, they're the same length, but not that one. It's shorter. So that one is your isosceles triangle. And the last one is scalene triangle, and you'll see that they have one slash, two slashes, and three slashes because all three of those lines are different lengths. So that's scalene for you, okay? So these are triangles that are based on the sides, on these lines, okay? Now you have triangles that are based on the angles that they make. So this one, I really want this to be easy for you. This is called the right triangle, and it's also called a 90-degree angle. What you have to remember about a right angle is it has this little square. A little square can always fit in the corner perfectly. Um, you'll notice that these ones have curves. Curves, you can't fit a square in there because this one would squish it, and this one you'd have to stretch it. So only the right angle or the right triangle can have this little teeny square in the corner. So remember that it's perfectly vertical and it's perfectly horizontal, makes a nice perfect straight L. So that's your right triangle. Now, acute triangle, it sounds like cute because it's so little, it's less than 90. This is your 90 degree angle, so your acutes are less than 90. That means this angle line over here will go like that or it'll go like that, or it'll go like that. Anyways, they're really, really small triangles. They're less than 90, okay? Let me see if I can hit this back button. Yep. Now you're obtuse. Uh, we talked about that in class. I remember saying that cute is like small and obese, like obtuse is like a big word. So it has this big, huge open angle, like the circle is huge in there instead of being this tiny little curve. So it's more than 90. So these are based on your angles. Your um, right angle is 90 exactly. Your acutes are less than 90. They're squishier and smaller. And your obtuse are bigger. They're more than 90, so they go stretched out. And I always teach my students Pac-Man. <laughs> so here's your little drawing to help you remember. Here's your right angle, and you can fit that little square. Oh, that's not going to work, hold on. You can fit that little square right in there, so it fits. There's your 90-degree angle, so it's right. Here's your acute because it's cute and it's less than 90. It's like a little puppy instead of a big, huge dog, which is up to. So this one's bigger than your right. And they also have straight angles, and, you know, go figure. It's just a straight line. So these cute little <laughs> Pac-Man arts and crafts help you remember that. So I figured I'd put that picture in there. Okay, so that's a nice little uh, preface for what we're working on today. So let's get right into it. Reasoning about triangles. You are going to be writing if it is a true or a false statement for numbers 1 through 6. If it's false, you have to sketch a counterexample. So let's get into that. We'll do this one together, then you guys are going to be pausing. Here we go. Number one, all isosceles triangles are also equilaterals. So let's bring up that little split screen. Hang on. Okay, so again, these are the ones that we're dealing with. The question says, is true or false? All isosceles triangles are also equilateral. No, that's false. Because what do we know about equilateral? All the sides are the same length. Is that true for isosceles? No. So this is false. So what you'll be expected to do in your workbook is that you're going to say it's false because all isosceles triangles are not equilateral because of these lines. This one and this one are the same. That's why they get one slash on each side. But this one's shorter, so we mark it to look differently with these two lines. So this is what an isosceles looks like. All right, so now I want you to try to do all of these on your own two, three, four, and five, and we will come back one by one to check your work. 
So number two, you're going to be comparing a scaling triangle, which is here, cannot have a line of symmetry. I know you went over that with um, Mrs. Hamilton, but if you guys want a refresher, look like this. You could take an object and put, oops, sorry, it's going to be angry because I'm selecting it. Let me try that again. It's going to look like this. You can, <laughs> that's not exactly center. Uh, I don't want to keep doing this because I waste your time. Why is this not erasing? Ugh. Anyways, you catch my drift. If you draw a line right down the center, and we're going to pretend that this is right down the center, then both the sides on the other side of the line, they're equal. They're the same exact image. You know, if you fold this right in half, that this side and this side will be exactly the same. So for two, a scaling triangle cannot have a line of symmetry. So that's a scaling triangle right there. So answer that question number two, pause your video, and then come back for the answer. And so obviously two is true, because where on earth would you draw that line? Would you draw it there? Is Are those two sides equal? No, and I guess... <laughs> Oh, I can't erase it. There's no way you can draw a line where the two sides are going to be, you know, lines of symmetry. You just can't find a way to do it. Um, so, yes, that's true. A scaling triangle cannot have any line of symmetry. I can't split it anywhere down the middle where they're going to be the same on both sides. All right, so now you're going to do number three. All right triangles, we're talking about this one now. All right triangles have two acute angles. Two acute angles. Is that true? So pause your video and think of your answer right now. So number three is true. I hope you found that because there's your right angle. There's a little box, but look at this one. Look how little that is and squishy. So I could totally draw this little curve. This is less than 90 degrees if you turn it on its side. So turn your head, you know, to the right and you can see it. This one also over here is little. So remember this straight line and then a straight line up. See how it looks like a box? So this line is less than 90, and same thing over here. This line is less than 90, so these are teeny little acute angles. So yes, oh, of course I can't. Here we go. So that's true. Number four, any triangle with an obtuse angle must be scalene. So here's your obtuse, but any triangle with an obtuse angle, that's this big, huge, wide open mouth, Pac-Man mouth, must be scaling. Is that true or false? Pause your video. Okay, so this one's false because remember what we know about a scalene up here again. On a scalene, all three sides are different. But look at this one that I drew. Are all three of those different? Well, this one right here is really long, but these two right here, they're the same. And look at the angle. Let me get a pen so I can draw that. Look at the angle that's right here. This is a huge Pac-Man mouth opening. This is obtuse. So this is false because this one is not, um, is not a scalene. So it's false. All right, number five. All equilateral triangles are acute. So here is equilateral. Are all equilateral triangles acute? Pause your video now and think of that. And number five is true. There's just no way around it. Anytime you make a triangle where every single side is the same exact length, it's always going to have a cute. And you can look at these little tiny angles. These are smaller than 90, smaller than 90, smaller than 90. They're always going to be equilateral, okay? Um, or they're always going to have equal measurements for them to be, uh, they're all going to be acute. All right, so number six. This is a scaling triangle we're asking about. A scaling triangle cannot have a right angle. So scaling, remember all three sides are different lengths. It cannot have a right angle. Is that true or false? Pausing the video now. Okay, so that's false because here's our right angle. So I put it in and this is scaling. Remember all three sides are different lengths. So there's this one, which is, oops, sorry, I can't draw on it. This is a, a picture I put in, but this one here is the shortest of them all. This one's the next. This is a kind of the medium one. And this stretched out one is the longest one. So all three are different lengths and it still um, has a right angle in it. So this is false. A scaling triangle can have a right angle. So there it is right there. All right. Um, we can't do this because I can't uh, check your work. So we're going to obviously skip, skip that. And um, if you want to practice this with an adult in your house that's with you, that would be amazing. Please go grab somebody. Um, I don't know who you might be with today. It could be a babysitter. It could be older sibling, could be mom or dad. But draw these out and get their feedback and see what they say. Because I wish we were in the classroom, but alas, we are not. So let's move on.
actually. I do think there's something I can share to help you check your work. Um, so <laughs> before I skip ahead, uh, we can address that these two can be drawn, but eight and 10 cannot. So let's look at number seven, an isosceles triangle with a right angle. Remember the rules of an isosceles triangle is that two sides are the same and one is not. So here, this line and this line, they are the same measurement, but this one's really long. And there's your little cute right angle square. So yes, this can have this can happen. You can have an isosceles triangle with a right angle. Number eight, this made me laugh pretty hard. A triangle with two right angles. No, you, where, you can have this one. Where would you put the other square? Where would you ever do that? It would be called a square or a rectangle. <laughs> so that's why it made me laugh. So if him, someone ever says, you know, if you can make um, a triangle with two right angles, you'll look them, you know, straight in the face and say, no, that would be a square or, or a rectangle. Nope. All right. So number nine, a triangle with more than one line of symmetry. So I can do that. Let me see if I can mark it for you. Okay. Wish me luck because this didn't go so great last time. This looks pretty even. <laughs> uh, there's my, uh, that's pretty, that's awful. I'm so sorry. We're just going to pretend that's my first line of symmetry. How about more than one line of symmetry? Sure. I can do it this way. I can do it this way. So I can, I can split it in half a bunch of ways. Um, so yes, it's possible and as long as your lines are better than mine. Sorry, but I think you catch my drift. You can see how you can split them in half a bunch of different ways. All right. So let's look at the next page. And this is the last page that we're working on. We're going to classify these triangles. So in your book, I hope you have your book in front of you. You have uh, these triangles that are labeled A all the way down through L. And you need to take these triangles and you need to put them in the Venn diagram where they belong. So, um, for example, the first one that we're working on are the right angles and the isosceles um, triangles. Excuse me. Like here's your right triangle. Here's your isosceles. Remember, the two sides are same. One is different. The right angle can have that 90 degree little square in there. So we want to drag the letters that belong into all the ones that are right, all the ones that are isosceles, and boys and girls, the middle of the Venn diagram means this triangle meets both requirement. It is right and it is isosceles, if that's possible. So I'm not going to give it away. If it's possible and it meets both requirements, it goes in the middle, middle of the Venn diagram. So please make this very serious effort and try to place these triangles where they go in here. And hopefully you have your book in front of you to make it a little bit easier because I know these are a little bit small on your screen. All right, pause now. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That took me a couple minutes to do. Um, so I hope that you persevered and did not give up and that you were able to figure these out. So the ones over here that are just right, nothing else are just right. That is B, this one here. And that is an I, by the way, it's a capital I. And that one is here. You can see the little square that's inside of it that gave it away. Okay. So we can say we're done with that. We're done with, oop, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. And we're done with that. Okay, so then over here, isosceles, and you might have been confused, and I can hear some of you yelling at me, what? Because I had to double check my work. Here, you look for the two little lines. So obviously, G is H. It, well, we should pick a different color, huh? Let's get rid of that. Make it clear. Um, so let's go in order, too. So these have two lines. So there's A. Uh, this one has two lines. So there's E. This one has two lines, G. This one has two lines, H. This, oops, skipping that one. And C. Uh, we're going to skip that one for a second too. Now, we weren't done because that's only four of them, but you can see I have all these letters. Two more of them also qualify because equilateral triangles are also isosceles triangle triangles. Uh, the rule is with an isosceles, at least two of the sides have to be the same length. So, hey, if you have three, then that's just even more. So, I didn't remember that rule, but that's true. So this letter C is also considered isosceles because at least two of the sides are the same. They just gave you a third one as a bonus, uh, which means also J will fit in that. So which one goes in the middle? Which one is both a right angle and an isosceles? Do you see the one that has a square and the two slashes? You should. It's right there. Letter L has your right angle and these two sides are the same. So you're going to put a big letter L right there in the middle. All right, so now that we practice that, let's try to do it again. I hope you can do this one on your own. We're going to look for all the acute angles and all the equilateral uh, triangles. And if anything overlaps, it goes in the middle. If it's both acute and equilateral, it goes here. All right, so pause your video and do that now, please. Okay, so for this one, and this one's a bit of a struggle, I'm not going to lie, because it was kind of hard to see one of them. Uh, G was pretty easy to see that it was acute because all these angles are very squishy small. 
and then E was very easy to see, very squishy and small. But I will tell you, when I looked at D, I'm like, what? That can't be a Q, because this almost looks like a right angle. But if you really look, this line right here is kind of going into the left a bit. So it's actually not right. And if you didn't know that, this is the hint, boys and girls, there is no square put in here. If there was a square, you would know that that's perfectly straight, so it can't be a Q, but there was no square. So even I forgot about that. I was kind of ashamed, like, oh, Mrs. Langford, you should have known better that this was a Q, because it doesn't have the little square to tell me it's a right angle. So try to remember your strategies. So G, D, E are acute, and you'll notice I didn't put anything for equilateral, because our equilaterals are here, C and J. How do I remember that? Because it has that slash, 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 slash. Okay, so I know that these are equilateral. And if you look at the angles, they're all really tiny. Do you guys see these curves? So they're super tiny. So guess where they go? They go right in here, C, and then J. All right? So nothing goes over here just by itself under equilateral. So I'm, I would be really impressed if you were able to do this without uh, having to get help or, you know, look it up. Um, so now we have one more practice. We're going to do this again, and we're going to be looking for um, those that are considered obtuse and those that are considered scalene. So again, there's this, this is an obtuse angle. Here's scalene, where everything is super small. And if anything happens to overlap, if it's possible, it goes in here in the center of the Venn diagram. Okay, pause your video now. So these are all of the ones that have the big obtuse angles as bigger than 90, A, H, F, and K. And then on this one for scaling, remember the rule of scaling, all three sides have different lengths. And that was these five, B, I, um, sorry, F, K, B, I, D. But ones that overlap were letters F, which is here. So that is both obtuse and scaling. And the letter K here, which has a big, huge obtuse angle. And they're scaling, meaning all three lines are different lengths. And that is it, boys and girls. You have survived a geometry lesson. I'm super proud of you. Um, okay, so that is it for today. Uh, you, this is your friendly reminder to get over to Think Central because, boys and girls, we have the official notice that report cards are coming out in two weeks. You have only two weeks to get caught up on everything. June 5th is the final day. So, again, make sure you're over on Think Central. Do all your homework. Do the quizzes. Do the tests. And we will be done teaching math on Monday. So you will have quite a few days to get caught up, but don't waste them because those days will fly by really fast. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you guys tomorrow.